Joy here. Uh, I know it's been a really long time since I've done a YouTube video, but I'm back and I'm going to show you how to make something that is so delicious. I'm drooling right now thinking about it and I'm wearing this shirt in honor of what I'm going to show you how to make. I'm going to show you how to make ghee, this nutty butterscotch beautiful fat. So good for you. Okay, so I used to be totally fat phobic um, back in the day when my skin was also really dry, suffered from eczema, my hair was not shiny like it is now, and it's because I wasn't eat, eating any good fats. Now I definitely eat good fats and I absolutely love ghee, so I thought I would just take you through the process of how to make it. Ghee has been around for like thousands of years. In fact, it dates back, I think, to like 2000 BC, and the first reports were used in northern India. Um, so, but now it's like a very trendy superfood, and it's used all over the world. But I really think that the trend of ghee, it's not a fad. It's not something that's going to go away. Um, and I'm going to share with you all of the health benefits and why I personally love it, aside from obviously just the taste. So before we get into the health benefits of ghee, because I'm going to kind of share them with you as I make them, you might be wondering like, what the heck is ghee? If you know what butter is, then you probably know what ghee is. So ghee is essentially clarified butter, but let's just go one step further. When you melt down butter and you remove all of the milk solids, the proteins, the water, you're essentially clarifying the butter, okay? So that is called clarified butter. But then when you let it simmer a little bit longer, on the bottom of your pan, you'll see that you get um, the fat start to brown and that browning lends this nutty butterscotch flavor and that's when you get ghee. So it's clarified butter and then let it simmer a little longer so that you get the ghee because it's so good. Okay, so the first thing you're wondering is what butter to make your ghee with. I like to use grass-fed butter and the reason I like grass-fed butter when making ghee is because it's just a little bit more nutrient dense. For example, um, CLA is a fatty acid, conjugated linoleic acid. And this is a fatty acid that actually helps you to burn fat better. Um, and it's richer in grass fed, also richer in fat soluble nutrients too. Um, it makes sense, right? If the cow is grazing on a pasture and eating more grass as opposed to eating tons of grains, then the nutritional density of the butter is going to be different. So when it comes to salted or unsalted, I make my ghee with unsalted butter because I like to control the amount of salt in my food. I like adding sea salt and Himalayan rock salts to my food, but I like to be the one who's in charge of it. But you can totally make ghee with salted butter. And then in terms of the amount of butter, as you can see here, this is just 250 grams. Grass-fed butter is a little more expensive, so you can definitely buy like the pound of butter, which is what most people buy. Um, that's fine, I'm just doing like a smaller one, but honestly the recipe applies to no matter how much butter you're using. Okay, so we just need a pot and we need some heat. So I've got both over here and you need a wire mesh strainer and you need a spoon and you need a bowl. So I'm actually just gonna grab a bowl. I'm gonna turn, now with the heat, you wanna do a medium low temperature. So I'm let's gonna, I'll put it at like a four and a half. And uh, you want a bowl because you want to be scraping out um, well, not scraping, sorry, that's not the right word because you don't have to scrape anything. You'll see that the milk solids, um, the whey rises, the fat um, sort of settles on the bottom and you just scrape off the whey as it's cooking. Even though it takes about 20 to 30 minutes, it's like a very mindful process. Like you don't have to be like totally standing over it the whole time. Um, you know, it's not like making risotto, but you do have to be kind of nearby. You can't just like throw your butter in your pot and then disappear for 20 minutes. Um, it also helps your butter melt faster if you kind of chop it up into chunks. So I'm actually gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna chop up my butter. Just like this. My butter's actually melting a bit, so it's a little bit sticky. So that'll just help it melt faster. So just put that into my pan here. Just like that, and then we watch the magic happen. Ghee and also butter is packed with an amazing substance called butyrate. And butyrate is a short chain fatty acid that actually your gut bacteria help to make. 
uh, but when you consume it, it is amazing for gut health. In fact, there's been studies that have shown that this substance is incredible for reducing inflammation and also really great um, to prevent conditions like Crohn's and uh, ulcerative colitis and may support insulin levels, obviously fights off inflammation and can even support the gut barrier function. So you can see here it's starting to melt and see this white stuff on the top? That's actually the whey. So that's the, that's the proteins rising to the top this is what a lot of people are sensitive to. So people who have um, dairy sensitivities and allergies, not, I, you know, if you have a dairy allergy, I wouldn't consume ghee, but if you have a sensitivity, um, then you could definitely consume ghee. So we can even start taking that off now. Um, and, you know, a lot of people, in terms of, you might be wondering, like, what do you do with the whey that rises to the top? You can compost it. Some people mix it into like, you can mix it into rice or, you know, cauliflower, mashed potatoes, that type of thing. So it does, it does take um, a little bit of time, but it's worth it for that golden buttery substance. So see those bubbles? I'm just gonna turn down my temperature a little bit so that it's not doing that because you don't want it to burn. Okay, so I did it on, it's medium low, but then I have to turn it down a bit because there's a lot of heat uh, within the pan, the pot itself. So one of the great things about ghee is that it actually has a higher smoke point than butter, around like 485 degrees for ghee, whereas butter has a lower smoke point. Um, if you've ever sauteed with butter, you know it browns really quickly. It tastes really good, but it's not great if you are wanting to saute something or, you know, roast something at like 400 degrees, for example. So ghee is much better um, for that. Okay, guys, so you can see here now I have clarified butter. See how it's like pretty clear? Um, I would just strain this to remove the last bits of whey, but we want to make ghee. So we're going to let this cook a little bit longer so that you start to see brown bits on the bottom. But this is clarified butter right here. So while my ghee is browning, I wanted to just tell you about some of the other nutrients that are in ghee because it is really wonderful. It's a rich source of fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A, uh, vitamin E and vitamin K. So vitamin K is amazing for bone health. Vitamin K helps to like keep calcium in your bones and all these nutrients together, vitamin A, vitamin E, great for skin health, glowing skin, healthy heart, healthy cardiovascular system. So it is, um, it is really, really amazing. Now, how much ghee do you use? Should you be like taking a spoonful of this every meal? No, definitely not. Um, moderation is really key, but what does moderation look like? Well, I'll tell you, you can saute with this. You could drizzle it on popcorn. You can mix it into mashed cauliflower or cauliflower rice. Um, use it like how you'd use olive oil or use it like how you, you would use butter. Uh, but just remember, you can bring it to a higher temperature. I like roasting. So I like doing roost, uh, I like roasting. I like roasting vegetables and putting ghee on my veggies. Sometimes when I cook fish, oh, I better go check my ghee again. I here it's sizzling. You don't want to like leave it for too long. My ghee is okay. The other thing is uh, we eat a lot of fish in our family, probably like two to three times a week. We have a daughter who's three and she loves fish. So it's a good protein for her. And I will take like maybe a teaspoon of ghee and kind of drizzle it over top of the fish. And then I bake it uh, with some lemon and a little bit of sea salt. Oh, so delicious. Okay guys, take a look. Oh, see all that? That's exactly what you want. We now have ghee. So I'm not too worried about these last little bits. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it through the wire mesh strainer um, into my mason jar. So make sure you've cleaned out your mason jar. Take your strainer, and you might actually wanna do this over a bowl instead, not what I'm doing, because now I have to be like uber precise. And just pour it in. Look at that golden, delicious, Wonderful healing fat. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> that was really hot. <laughs> Don't pick up the jar when you've just poured the ghee in there. Okay, so here you are. That's what it looks like. Now, obviously, once the ghee cools, it's gonna look like this. So you can store it um, just in your kitchen cupboard, but I just use caution and I actually store ghee um, in my fridge. So that's it. Ghee made with grass-fed butter. 
Hope you guys love the recipe. Um, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, post below. Uh, and of course, I'll put the full recipe on my blog as well, which is joyoushealth.com. Bye guys.